Um, but I wonder if any of you are parishioners of the PSA or have been perhaps in the past. You know what the PSA is? The PSA is this big cavernous building that's at Gabe Nesbitt Park that houses basketball and volleyball and indoor soccer and flag football. Um, and that right now probably has 1,500 people in it um, on Sunday morning. Stephanie and I, my wife and I, we are, um, we're faithful parishioners of the PSA. <laughs> we pay our tithes. Um, we show up on the weekends. Uh, some days we even go for weekday services, actually. Uh, we say hi to our friends when we get there. Uh, we find a seat. We participate in the habitual uh, chants and responses. Um, we, don't, we don't usually receive communion ourselves when we go, but our kids go up. Um, they get down on one knee, and, and they partake. It's usually a juice box uh, and a snack. The Van Kirks are faithful, uh, faithful PSA members. The day will come, though, when we will no longer be members of the PSA. Our kids will stop playing PSA sports, or they will just grow out of them entirely, and our attendance will, will drop off, and eventually we will just stop going altogether. The only reason we are parishioners of the PSA at all is because of what happens inside the PSA or sometimes in that little soccer field they built right next to it. But it's just what happens there. Once our kids are no longer part of what's going on inside, then we will no longer attend there. The PSA is obviously not a church. Um, it may be an idol temple. Um, but whatever it is, it's not a church. And I, I bring it up, though, because it is an example of this principle of attendance, of involvement. Like, we are parishioners of the PSA solely because of what happens inside the PSA. My question for you is, does church function on this same principle? Are we members of St. Andrew's solely because of what happens in St. Andrews. I'm going to answer this question by reading to you the words of the Lord our God. I, the Lord, have called you with righteous purpose and taken you by the hand. I have formed you and destined you to be a light for the peoples, a lamp for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring captives out of prison, out of the dungeon where they lie in darkness. Did you know that, O oh church? That's Isaiah, it's chapter 42, verses 5 to 7. It's not the Isaiah we read. The Isaiah we read sounds very similar. And that is holy work for the people of God. To be a light for the peoples, to open the eyes of the blind. To bring captives out of their dark dungeons. The people of God are part of the people of God for the sake of the world. Not for what happens in the church, but for what happens outside. So when Jesus, in our gospel reading today, the one we did read, when Jesus, in our gospel reading, tells his disciples, you are the light of the world, he's not making up some new image. He's building on this image from the prophet Isaiah. We come to church to get lit. Right? <laughs> not like that. <laughs> Look, there's not that much wine in the chalice. Not like that. <laughs> we get lit so we can go out there and shine a light and help the world to see. To help those who are blinded by anger or grief, hatred, to find the light of love. To help those who are in the dark dungeons of loneliness or apathy. That they may... They may see the light of God. Their depression may be met with the light of Christ. That the language we use, like being blinded by rage, or like being in a dark place, this is the language of Jesus, the language of Isaiah, the language of our God. We have a purpose. You have purpose to 
let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Our good works are like the rays of light that make present God to the world. We are the cause of God's glorification in the world. And the the people of the world, and maybe, to be honest, even some of the people in the pews right next to you today, they might just need the particular sort of light that you can shine. Because we don't all shine the same way. Our light bulbs are not wired the same. I want want to tell you about my friend Don. Don, um, he doesn't go here, don't worry. Um, Don was a good dad, a good husband. Um, He he worked doing graphic design for the airlines. Uh, You have almost certainly wiped your face with a cocktail napkin that Don designed. (laughs) He and his wife had one son. Um, He was a good acolyte. Uh, He was a great athlete. He was an excellent student. Uh, The son went on to Yale and played football. About the time his son graduated high school and went off to New Haven, um, Don quite nearly lost his faith. Not because of any particular crisis that he suffered, um, but just because his involvement at the church had become more of a family activity. Church had become essentially like the PSA. There. Now, Don's story is not uncommon. Um, there are certain life transitions that pretty accurately reflect a, a drop-off in church attendance. One of those, obviously, is the young person when they go to college. Uh, some of you may have done that thing yourself. Uh, but there's another, another one, and that's when the youngest young person in a family goes off to college. And the parents of the young person suddenly wake up late on Sunday morning, and they realize that they don't have any reason they have to show up at the PS, I mean, church that day. <laughs> what, saved, what saved Don's faith was a new person who came to the church about the same time he started to, to teeter, to waffle, because, you know, most people don't quit church whole hog all at once, you kind of take it slow. And about the same time he was, he was starting to teeter, this new person came in, and, and in Sunday school, they talked about the questions uh, and answers of life in a way that that made church relevant to the rest of Don's week. This new person shed light by the way they themselves served and the way they thought about the world. They helped Don see that his faith, if he'd practice it with prayer and with service, would change the way he himself interacted with the rest of the world, the rest of the week. Now, it wasn't that this church only had one person in it who could shine any light at all. It wasn't that. But it was that Don needed this particular person in order to be able to see it. He needed light like at his wavelength. It was a light that, that for Don shone through the intellectual fog that clouded his view of the world. You may remember from physics class, the different colors of light, they have different wavelengths. Um, for us as humans, we can see like what's called the visible spectrum. It's like 380 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And when we have all the wavelengths of light together, we have white light, all the light. But of course, there's light to us that we can't see. They can't see the stuff below the visible spectrum, the ultraviolet light. That's the kind of stuff that burns you. And we can't see the stuff above the visible spectrum, infrared light. Now, God, this metaphor, God is all the light. God is white light, all the light. In him, there is no darkness at all. The Bible. But as human beings, we are particularly sensitive to certain wavelengths of spiritual light. We don't, we don't see it all. In fact, one of us to another, um, we're sensitive to different wavelengths of light. And naturally, as you live out your life with good works, as Jesus says, you will tend to give off a certain wavelength of light. You will burn like a certain spiritual color you will. Maybe you give off a warm, inviting light as you serve food to those who come out of the darkness to eat at the community garden kitchen, like our sister Cleette Harrison does uh, multiple times a week. Some people respond to that. They're sensitive to it. And in seeing your service, it helps them see God at work in the world. Um, 
Maybe you're like our friend Richard Mickelson, who does spiritual direction, who helps people identify the light that's burning in their lives, help them see the spirit at work. Maybe you're like our daughters of the king, many of whom are no longer able to be as physically active as they once were, but whose personal good works of intercessory prayer and spiritual discipline shine like the soft beauty of candlelight. When people ask them to pray and their prayers are answered, people see the glory of God and give him glory. One of our choir members, um, Daniel, he recently spent a weekend uh, doing prison ministry with adolescent boys. That's a substantial more literal reading of the Isaiah passage than the one I gave us. Um, It sounded immensely difficult. Uh, Daniel said it was wonderful. Uh, Under the bright fluorescent lights of the prison, you know the lights that like literally never go off the prison, uh, Daniel shone the light of God's forgiveness. And in seeing him, some of these boys were brought to give glory to God in heaven. But in all these cases, These people are shining light out in the world. St. Andrews is not the PSA. I know that functionally it works like that sometimes. But theologically, one cannot be a member of St. Andrews for the sake of the events inside these walls. That is not why God called us together. What we do together in here, we do for the sake of shining light in the world out there, which is a profound purpose and an enormous responsibility. It's impossible not to look, isn't it? Like I saw some of your heads turn the moment that light went on. When you shine your light onto the surfaces of the world, people will naturally turn and look for where the light came from. Also, you are the dull roar of the world. A fan in the spotlight cannot be silenced. No, you're just the light, right? You're shining the light. In all seriousness, the point is not just that we light up the walls, but that people turn around when we do that and see the source of the light. That's our mission, so they can see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. God has lit his lamps. He has no use for us to scurry under bushel baskets or hide behind walls. We are members here for the sake of the world out there. And we're going to let our light shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine.